Finding gratitude in a midlife crisis? Are you kidding me? But yes, it is possible. But first, we have to debunk the idea that it is a crisis versus just an entry into our next chapter. A crisis implies midlife blues are a huge problem and therefore something that needs to get fixed, right? But what if all that can change if you embrace gratitude for this chapter of your life and you use those feelings to create something far beyond what you previously imagined? Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Extraordinary Women Podcast Show. I'm your host, Sherry Harmel, and today we are delving into a topic that might seem surprising, but holds, honestly, incredible potential, the impact of gratitude on a midlife crisis. Yes, you heard it right. Gratitude has the potential to be a game changer during one of life's most challenging phases. Now, before we dive into the role of gratitude, let's challenge that very notion of a midlife crisis. It's often portrayed as a period of turmoil, right? A time when everything seems to unravel. But what if, instead of viewing it as a crisis, we see it as a gateway to our next chapter? A shift in perspective truly can set the stage for something extraordinary. But how does gratitude play into the equation? Well, gratitude is more than just positive affirmations. It's about cultivating a mindset that appreciates the good in our lives rather than dwelling on what's missing. Psychology Today defines gratitude as an emotion expressing appreciation for what one has. But how do we apply this to the challenges and disappointments that often accompany midlife? Sometimes, honestly, it's hard. It's that time of the year when we create goals and resolutions for the new year. And it's super easy to beat yourself up for not accomplishing something that was on your list for 2023, right? For example, I've had losing weight and getting in shape on my yearly goal list for more years than I care to admit. It would be easy for me to say, yep, that goal is on my list again. I probably won't do it, but I have to put it on my list. What's wrong with that statement? First, I've given up before it's even February 1st. And even though I don't say it, I'm feeling disappointed in myself that it's on my list again. Also, it seems I have very low expectations that it will ever not be on my New Year's resolution list. Not good, right? Kind of depressing, crisis provoking. Well, what if I flip my whole way of thinking around my weight this past year? What if I take that gratitude definition of emotions expressing appreciation for what one has and apply it to my body? Well, it's going to look something like this. My body has been healthy this year. It operates beautifully. Another one is discovering a holistic doctor who introduced me to CoQ10 has transformed my energy levels. Statin drugs, I didn't know this, eat up CoQ10, which is sort of like an energy producing enzyme, maybe vitamin, supplement, whatever it is. Something that my cardiologist actually never clarified, never talked about. It has made all the difference in the world. Another, joining a club uh, that you know has a great f- fitness program, not only supports my fitness goals, but may also connect me with some like-minded people because I would like to make some more, grow my friendship base, I should say, here in Boston. I've also learned a lot about my own personal style, what looks good on me. That's attributed actually to style people that I've interviewed on this show, such as Marianne, the French chic expert, Beth Jolly on style at a certain age, as well as Sarah Grio. So now that I know a little bit more about what looks good on my body, I feel more attractive. And that helps me. That motivates me. Suddenly, I find that I'm not in a funk. Now, sometimes you have to dig deep though 
to find goodness and blessings in the middle of something that can be very distressing. Financial challenges, as an example, which is a common trigger during midlife and can be particularly stressful. Well, as you all know, I spend about half the year in Paris. I love my apartment in Paris, but, 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 I just received a major assessment and it put me into a total panic. I was so frustrated by my lack of information because I'm not fluent in French. It was to the point where I was ready to abandon my Parisian dream. But just like any other crises, gratitude offered me a way out. Now, the assessment, just to clarify, is all about purchasing the entire building, purchasing an apartment in the building for our live-in concierge. A live-in concierge in U.S. terms is a live-in caretaker, basically. So after numerous emails, and I'm telling you, verbal complaints to anyone who would listen, I had to take my own advice and find some gratitude in this situation. It was hard, truly. It was hard. But I forced myself to be open to a changed perspective just so I could see how different I felt. So I recognized how lucky I am. This was on my list. How lucky am I to have such a lovely apartment in Paris? I feel safe in it. I feel at home in it. And the concierge, her name is Angelina, couldn't be more incredible. She takes care of my apartment when I'm not there. She's on top of all the deliveries, and she keeps the place so clean and organized that even the trash room is pretty. (laughs) Plus, I love how she decorates the entry for holidays. Number two on the list, the assessment, yes, was a shock. But in Paris, the monthly housing bill, or the HOA as we call it in America, is quite low in comparison. And part of that reason is that they do not build up any kind of reserves. There's no laws about how many, how much of a reserve a building has to have. Therefore, when something needs to be done, there's an assessment. So I had to say to myself, relax, Sherry. It's not excessive. If you look at it, spread out over a period of time. So my friends, your first task is to make a gratitude list. Take what is most upsetting to you, what might be creating the most stressful feelings around your midlife, and put that at the top of a piece of paper. And then list out all the related things and people that you are grateful for, that truly impact in a positive way, whatever it is that is creating stress in your life. It's a a super simple exercise that can work wonders, I promise you, in shifting your perspective. Now, how can you make gratitude a part of your daily life? I suggest establishing a gratitude practice. Set aside time each day to reflect on what you're thankful for. Treat it like an exercise program for your mind and soul. My friend uh, Sharon Sarega Walters has a book that she titled Graticize 365. Sharon's a former physical uh, trainer and so personal trainer. And so this was just a a fascinating combination of using uh, gratitude practice um, merged with an exercise practice. She really, in that book, if you want help at all and kind of how to lay it out, it's a great little book to purchase, but it emphasizes really the importance of consistent gratitude. Now, when I did this with my Paris apartment assessment, I started to breathe normally again, which I hadn't done for a while. And I didn't realize it until I actually sat down and went through the gratitude list and actually started to incorporate a gratitude practice. Embracing gratitude is a behavior that shifts your perspective. And actually, it truly does positively impact your body. In midlife, it is very easy to worry about our health. My daughter's only 35, and yet she worries about her health all the time. And I relate or share this with you, because if a doctor said, do this, and it will improve your health, we would all do it, right? Of course we would. So why not embrace a gratitude practice, a gratitude list? So gratitude isn't just a feel-good concept. It's backed by science. Believe it or not, research shows that cultivating gratitude can lower stress levels. Plus, it can change your life by reshaping your brain 
and directing your focus towards more positive experiences. But how does a gratitude practice like truly change your life? How does that happen? The benefits extend beyond personal well-being. Think about it. Just like when you decide that you're going to buy certain items or a certain item. Let's say you want to buy a new pair of shoes. Suddenly, you are noticing shoes everywhere. You are seeing shoes in storefronts. You are seeing shoes on other people. You're noticing shoes that you absolutely love. Well, gratitude works exactly the same way. By focusing on the positive, what happens is you start to attract more positivity into your life. I think it's called your reticular activating system, RAS, in our brains. It is how we tell our brains what to pay attention to. And if it's positivity, your brain starts to look for it and bring it to you. We all remember that old groundbreaking movie that was titled The Secret. I think it was probably like maybe 10, 12 years ago. And it, and the secret, the movie was all about focusing on good things and positive things and how then the world will start to present you more of them. Well, it's actually true. So as we navigate the uncharted waters of midlife, let's remember that gratitude isn't a magic wand that erases challenges, but instead a compass that guides us through the storms maybe towards a brighter, more fulfilling future. I want to thank you for joining me today on the Extraordinary Women Show. I hope this episode inspires you to embrace gratitude as a powerful tool for transforming your midlife journey. Until next time, stay grateful and keep creating your fabulous next chapter. Abiento.